Hi everybody, welcome to McNulty's Book Corral. Today we're doing something a little different. The title of this episode is Objet d'Ar. Objet d'Ar, Objects of Art. Art objects or collectible items that we hang on to because they have a personal collectible value or often a nostalgic value. At the end of this episode, I am going to have a book. Don't worry, I haven't given up on the books. I just thought that I would do something a little different because people sometimes ask, what do you collect other than books and guns and comic books and old movie memorabilia and so forth? And so I just grabbed a couple of things from the bookshelves to show you uh, some objets d'art. Some knickknacks, perhaps you might call them, or a firma, uh, things of that nature. So let's take a look at some of them. This is here, uh, I'll have a close-up of this too. This is a little, I don't know what it is, it's a little uh, metal gold miner that I picked up uh, as a child in South Dakota, and that's been sitting on my bookshelves for decades. I've never seen another one like it. It was probably something in the 1960s that was quite common in souvenir shops out west and here I still have it and I've never seen one. Um, you know it's very interesting stuff. Um, I also as a child I began to uh, collect rocks and so forth because I was in, interested in rocks and minerals and so here is an amethyst crystal that I've had since about the same time I picked up this gold mining piece. In fact, this is also from uh, out west in the 1960s, and I've had this crystal all these years. Can you imagine that? So I like the the feel of these. You know, you get a tactile sensation from owning these things. They're just little knickknacks. Nostalgia plays a role in the things that we hang on to. Um, you know, it's important to us to surround ourselves with things that... Uh, have emotional value for us. So from the same period, since we're going back in time, here is a piece of polished petrified wood that I uh, that I had. Same period, just thought I'd show those. And then later on, here is another amethyst. And this was from a lapidary drum that I used to polish stones. And this was partially uh, polish so you can see it's not completed the crystal um, but it's a nice it's a nice knickknack and you know those minerals were fun here's a piece of fool's gold you know I have a lot I have a lot of this a lot a lot of this stuff goes around so a lot of minerals uh, interesting stones that I was polishing this one I don't know if you can see that I'll have close-ups of this just fun little minerals that I've kept over the years this is a soap dish from about 1917, 1916 or so, it belonged to my grandfather, and he carried this with him when he was in the army during World War I. I. I don't believe it was issued by the army, but it was the soap dish he had because he told me that. And I just keep old coins in it now, as you can see, just a lot of different types of coins and so forth are in here, but this belonged to my grandfather, so this sits on the shelf for, for decades and decades. Interesting material. Here's one of my favorite little knickknacks from my den, and this is a deactivated hand grenade. That my father brought back from the service when he was in uh, the army during the Korean conflict, and you can see it's deactivated. You can pull the pull the you can pull the pin and nothing happens. I used to play with this as a child when there was a TV show on called Combat with Vic Morrow. I'm sure you have seen it, for those of you who are from the same generation. And we used to throw these around. What's interesting about these hand grenades from this period is that every kid on the block had one because all of their dads were in the Army. And they all came back with deactivated hand grenades. I don't know if they still do that anymore, but back, back then uh, they did. I don't even know if hand grenades look like this anymore. Probably not. Um, so fun little things to have there. And here is a little wicker basket that I keep on the shelf. And it has like, here's a, here is a Hopalong Cassidy belt clip of some type that I think was found in a flea market. <laughs> and then I have a commemorative coin from the 1968 Navajo 
reservation in Arizona when I was there and I so I've had that and then I have arrowheads you know do you collect arrowheads I have a I have a little basket here full of full of different arrowheads fun things to have you know just to keep around material things that we hang on to that are just just fun and exciting to have and in this little cowboy thing here I actually bought this in Deadwood South Dakota and uh, it has a, the top has a holster gun and holster on it. it's just a cute little thing and in here I keep an old Deadwood wooden nickel and again this is from the 60s <laughs> And I've been to Deadwood uh, multiple times. And in a recent trip to Deadwood, it was probably 10 years ago, I picked up this really cool cowboy or Western lawman badge. You see that right there? Isn't that cool? <laughs> and it's probably the best job you could have in the Old West. It says brothel inspector, Deadwood, South Dakota. So for those of you with ambition, they need help. <laughs> so anyways... <laughs> Just a little fun things. Now this, this is a cigar. This is an old cigar box, and it is Jose Escalante. All right, so it's a Jose Escalante cigar box. And in here, I have a couple of interesting things. I have um, this belonged to my father. Let's see if I can pull it out. And this is a this is a straight razor that this was only recently discovered in our garage up north, and that's his old straight razor from 40s 50s um, with the original box that it was in and I have his old cigarette lighter remember those you know oh, look at it it's still look at that it still sparks that's amazing and a couple of his pocket knives that need to be restored uh, but the important thing that I keep in here is in here and this is my grandfather's gold pocket watch from again the first world war and I'll show you that and this is normally locked up in a safe actually so you can see the gold pocket watch there and I haven't wound it up I don't know if I can get it open or not I might have to have my uh, assistant over here assist me that's what assistants are for uh, if they my assistant could assist me in that and get that open my assistant ladies and gentlemen here she is that's her hand She's very shy. She doesn't want to be seen on camera. You know why? Because she's a hot babe. So, <laughs> thank you, my assistant. You're welcome. All right. So, here's my grandfather's pocket watch opened up. I assume it still runs. I haven't wound it, and I'm not going to. And he had on the end of it, he had a little tag thing that has an M for McNulty on. I don't know if you can see that. I'll have some close-ups of this stuff uh, on there. So, I keep that in wrapped in this old silk American flag. Um locked away that belonged to my grandfather and I also have my mother's wedding rings in there as well uh, long gone people so the reason we keep these things near us is because um, you know it reminds us of the good times that we had a couple of final things to show you this is a fascinating thing right here uh, actually it's not this is just a brass mug and I've had I've had this since the 70s. It's, it needs to be polished. Uh, it's pretty grimy. It, this has been this just this gets knocked around on the bookshelf. Okay, uh, I'm proud to tell you, however, that I have consumed a great deal of Guinness from this brass mug. And you know what? I hope now that I've brought it out of the cobwebs, I should probably drink another one out of it uh, fairly soon, don't you think? Hey, vote on that, and you win absolutely nothing. So, finally, finally the weird stuff. You've been waiting for something really weird, right? Just for you, all right? This is a voodoo doll. Now, this was the first voodoo doll I bought in Tater Red's Voodoo Shop on Beale Street in Memphis, Tennessee. Mid-1990s when I was down there interviewing an actor named Sheb Woolley. I talked about him in a previous episode about my book, uh, Trail of the Burned Man. Um, Sheb was a good old boy. I really, really love that guy. 
So I bought this at Tater Reds. Tater Reds Voodoo Shop is still there on Beale Street in Memphis. Great place. So I will not reveal to you if I have ever used this for any purpose. And if I did use it, I'm not going to tell you if I was successful or not. So, so keep guessing, all right? So there's my first voodoo doll, all right? You got that? And then a few years ago, I've been to Memphis several times, and a few years ago, my wife and I returned to Memphis, and what did I buy at Tater Reds, which is still there? I bought this voodoo doll, <laughs> so, so be careful, all right? If you aggravate me, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, guys. Now, this one does have the pins in it. It has the black-tipped pin. You can't see it, I know, and then the white-tipped pin, and you can use voodoo dolls for both good and evil purposes as you choose allegedly if you believe in that and i'm not going to comment on that further i just think it's really cool i really like this one because it's really colorful this one is kind of kind of plain and i think the layer of dust on this one is pretty thick actually um so this is a newer one take a, take a good close-up look at that voodoo doll is that spooky looking or what how's that for cool <laughs> All right, so just a couple of these objects, uh, you know, the, these knickknacks that you find knocking around. We put these things, again, we keep these things in our lives because they are nostalgic. And that's why we put photographs on our walls. You see the photographs behind me on the wall of our families because we love them. And when they're gone, or even if they're not gone, it, it brings comfort to us. So that's why we hang on to this stuff. Same with books, okay? One book today. It's called A Glossary of Literary Terms, 3rd Edition. This book is still in print, and I believe they're up to, gosh, probably the 11th or 12th edition. And this is a vital book for any of you literary-type people out there because it gives you information on every type of literary device or trend, motif, theme, etc. It is documented in here, and gives you an explanation and definition of those literary terms lyric poetry romanticism melodrama the great chain of being if i mention the great chain of being which i don't know if i have or not but the great chain of being is a vital literary um term to understand especially if you're getting into some of the uh renaissance material uh, or if you're reading shakespeare john milton any of that the great chain of being is a fascinating uh thing to look up get a copy of this book and look it up i'm not going to explain it to you so a glossary of literary terms again this is probably this is the third edition there's probably an 11th or 12th edition out there and that's it for today just something a little different and until next time stay well